and bold. Long live his fame and long live his glory and long may his story be told. You couldn't tame a town like Dodge City, Kansas in 1876 by preaching the golden rule alone. If Dodge was to be civilized, the only argument was a fast gun or hard fists. Marshal Wyatt Earp knew this from bloody experience, and Marshal Earp should have known that his enemies were still out to get him by assassination or by so discrediting him that he would have to quit. Dear Margaret, it's happened. I have fallen in love. His name is Wyatt Earp, and he's the marshal here in Dodge City. Dodge City of all places. But that's why I know it's real. Dodge is very real. There's nothing but dust and the hot Kansas sun and... Fabian. Uh, uh, no, ma'am, I'm uh, not hurt at all, thanks. But he is. Did you shoot him? Oh, no, ma'am. I just uh, hit Mr. Driscoll over the head uh, a bit. Oh, but he's bleeding. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Sullivan, would you take Mr. Driscoll to jail, please? But Wyatt, shouldn't he have a doctor? Uh, and send for Doc McCarty. I'm sorry, Mr. Herb. Forget it. Uh, Miss Fabian, you you don't belong here. Oh, but I was afraid that. Now, the judge isn't going to like this. You uh, made yourself kind of prominent. I embarrassed you. I'm sorry. Well, it isn't that. It's just that you shouldn't rush out when you hear gunfire. You might get yourself hurt. Would that bother you? Yes, ma'am. It sure would. Say nothing about how your father would feel. Don't tell me you're afraid of my father. Or of public opinion. Look, Miss Sally, this is Dodge City. Like I've been trying to tell you for a week, it's a rough town. Now, Mr. Driscoll was drunk, carrying guns in the street. They were loaded with real bullets. All right. Once more, I'm sorry. Will you promise me not to rush out of the hotel when you hear gunfire? All right. Why don't you come in and talk to me? Well, I'd like nothing better, but I can't right now. Why not? Well, you see, Mr. Driscoll's a friend of Mr. Rakel, and they were drinking together, and I gotta go find Mr. Rakel before he cuts loose. I didn't dream life in a little western town could be so simple-minded. Well, you get your father to tell you how simple-minded drunks and gunslingers can be. No, you explain it to me. In half an hour? I'll be back in 30 minutes. I'll be waiting then. Where's Mr. Rake? Over the Long Branch Saloon, picking a fight with the dealer. Hey, let's go. You and the teachers at Miss Finchley's won't believe me, but I've just returned from a street fight. My dear Wyatt had to hit a drunken man on the head with a pistol. He is still Miss Sallying me, but. This time he called me Miss Fabian, so I mustn't... Help! 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 That man is drunk! Don't let him kill me! You bet I'll kill... Stand aside, you tin horn Johnny Law. I'm gonna teach this little runner. To... You're under arrest, Mr. Rakel. You can't arrest me, Herb. This town belongs to the Rakel and the Driscoll outfit. Not anymore. Why, Mr. Rakel? Oh, well, my old friend Judge Baby. Judge, tell his young hoodlum who... Lock him up. Oh, one moment, Herb. I'm well acquainted with Mr. Rakel. I'm sorry, I'm... Judge, but he pulled a gun on this man. Oh, no, Mr. Rakel... I said lock him up. I'm sure the judge doesn't want to argue this case in the street.
Anything I can do to help, Judge? Yes, Mr. Albright. Try to talk some sense into that young hothead. I'll take care of it right away, Your Honor. Why, Papa? You look angry. Oh, it's that young Marshal fellow, Earl. He had the cheat to arrest Bob Rakel. Who's Mr. Rakel? Why, he and Toby Driscoll have the two largest cattle spreads anywhere. Both fine men. Fine men. And they're both in jail. What? Well, Wyatt arrested Mr. Driscoll about ten minutes ago. He was drunk and shooting guns in the street. Oh, no. Toby and Bob do a million dollars worth of business in a year. Did I hear you call that fellow Wyatt? Yes. Since when are you on first name terms with Mr. Earp? I've been seeing him, Papa. Every chance I can get. You and Earp? I'm in love with him. I intend to marry Wyatt if he'll have me. If he'll... <sighs> I think we'd best talk about this later. Let's talk about it right now. Well, I've, um, I've got to go to the jail. Papa, Wyatt hasn't asked me, so don't blame him. Or at least... Well, I do have some pride. I've always been patient with you. Toby, what are you doing in here? Same as you, I reckon. But you'll never make this stick, Wyatt. Look, you were drinking and shooting guns in the street, and that'll stick. Oh, no, you don't, Herb. Turn them both loose. That's an order. From who? From Judge Fabian. He hasn't heard the evidence yet. Now, you wait a minute. You get in there, too. I'll listen to you in court. By that time, you won't be in any shape to listen. Well, if you want to bring your men in, try it. Albright tried it. He offered Clay Allison $1,000 to gun me. You know, the trouble with you big pistols is you turn into pop guns every time a fight's off it. Well, you'll have to stay here and watch him. But you better get some cotton to plug your ears. Judge, what's on your mind? Well, I started to the jail to talk to Earp. But for personal reasons, I decided not to. <laughs> no use talking to him. With George Hoover away, you're acting mayor. Yeah. Well, can't you persuade Earp to release Bob and Toby? No, sir. He threw Pete Albright in the same cell. Albright, eh? It won't do, Mr. Kelly. You realize that, don't you? Well, Earp has to release those men. If he doesn't, he'll have both the Rakel and the Driscoll outfits treeing the town. Doesn't the young fool have any respect for his own life? None at all. He'll never make old bones. And that's satisfactory to you, huh? Listen, I ain't had a moment's peace since Earp got here. He's near got me killed four times. The finest funeral I'd pay for him. You sound sincere. I am that, on oath. Then why not discharge the man? Isn't that the simplest way out? No, sir. Huh? He's like my own conscience, Judge. Bedeviling me day and night. Man can't discharge his own conscience. You rate Mr. Earp rather high. The bravest and the best, sir. I hate him and I envy him. You gonna back him in this play? I've no choice. And neither of you, Judge. What? Lord save us all, the man's right. My daughter seems to agree with you. Yes, and you talk to Wyatt about that. It's a father's duty. Well, uh, a young man with the character you give And he'll die young. So he's no business leaving your Miss Sally a widow. I agree with you. And I will talk to him. Oh, good for you, Judge.
You Rako's men? I'm Toby Driscoll's foreman. Oh, yeah, you're a big ranch, aren't you? Wyatt Earp threw both Driscoll and Rakel in jail. Threw them both in jail for what? Getting a little drunk. Us Driscoll's aim to go after Earp. How about you? Well, I don't know. He's, he's pretty fast on the draw. Gunning's too good for him. We got other plans. Tell you about it on the way to Dodge. All right. Come on, boys. Let's ride. Just one second, sir. Wyatt, Judge Fabian to see you. No, thank you, Helm. Sit down, sir. Thank you. I, uh, came to see you on a personal matter. Uh, look, sir, if it's about Driscoll and the... No, 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 no. I will find them in court tomorrow morning. Well, thank you, sir. You see, it's sort of a test case. We can't afford to treat the cattle owners any different than the hired hands. You see, quite so. My daughter tells me that she's been seeing you, uh, socially. Yes, sir. Mr. Earp, you're in a dangerous profession. Yes, sir. I don't think Sally understands just how dangerous it is. Well, I should try to tell her. You in love with Sally? Well, sir, I hope not. But I, I'm afraid I am. Why do you say you hope not? Well, sir, for the same reason you came here. We both know what kind of a life a peace officer lives, what can happen to him. You see, Sally's from Boston, and well, sometimes I get the feeling that well, that she thinks Dodge City is just a great big Wild West show. <laughs> I'm certain of that. I don't think she realizes just how violent and brutal life on the frontier can be. Well, sir, that's why I haven't... Uh... Asked her to marry you? Yes, sir. Well, I hope you'll give yourself time to do some more thinking about it. I can't pretend that Sally would follow my wishes. She's like her mother, who insisted that we move west after the war. This country demanded more of my wife than her health could stand. I blame myself. That's why I... Well, thank you for hearing me out. Yes, sir. Good day, Marshal. Dreadful, you can't tell me. What did my father say to you? Well, just what every father would say. He was really very nice about it. What he had to say made sense. Wyatt, my father's prejudice against this country for women, on account of my mother. I know. He doesn't want you to marry a man in my line of work. So that's it. He's afraid I couldn't face up against the daily fear of your being hurt. I'm a coward. You think about it. I don't want to think about it. Wyatt, you are in love with me. Yes, I am. But it can't come true. Not right now. Why not? Because of what you are, Sally, and what I am. What life in Dodge is like. You can't just marry... <laughs> Why didn't you shoot back? He was aiming high. He was just trying to warn me. I think I would have shot back. You see, I, I really am quite tough. No, you're not. Wyatt, did I faint? Am I crying? We haven't seen a man get hit with a 45 slug yet. I saw you hit Mr. Driscoll with a gun. Well, you do have courage, Sally. And more courage than you. I'd marry you tomorrow. Say yes, Wyatt. Accept the proposal of this bold, bad woman who loves you so. Sally, I love you so much that I... Then it's settled. I'm going to be Mrs. Wyatt Earp. You can't escape now, dear. Darling, I don't want to escape. I just want you to be sure that... What? What? 
You better take Miss Sally right straight back to the hotel. Why? The Driscoll and Rakel outfits are headed for town. Slap his face and wake him up from dreaming. He's the marshal of Dodge City, and if he don't think quick, he's going to be dead. Dead? Well, I hate to be so blunt, but you need to learn the truth. Mr. Kelly is an excitable Irish, or Sally. Don't let Mr. Earp blarney you. There's a bunch of mean, killing cowhands coming after him. Very well, then. I'll have my father deputize every man in town. We'll fight them. Not this boy. He'll try to do it all by himself. Oh, now. Wyatt, you're not that foolhardy, are you? Look, I've had men coming after me ever since I started as a marshal. Nine times out of ten, it was a false alarm, and the other times... Well, I'm still living. Now, you go on back to your place and soak your head in a bucket of water. I'll talk to you later. Mr. Kelly has a large imagination. Whatever my faults, I ain't a widow-maker. Widow-maker? Is that supposed to frighten me? Well, no, it's uh, just bad-tempered Kelly talk. I wonder if my father couldn't have planned this whole thing. It's quite possible. No. Then if it is true about the cow hands, what are you going to do? Well, I tell you, I'm going to take you back to your hotel and... And I'm going to go have a nice long talk with Mr. Kelly. But the cow hands, he said they were going to... <laughs> you one. I've let all your remarks about marriage pass, but what you pulled tonight was just about the limit. Well, save your strength. You're gonna need it in the morning. For what? You ever hear of Big Rance, the foreman for Toby Driscoll? No, I can't say as I have. Is he faster than Clay Allison? He don't fight with guns. He fights with his fists. Oh, well, that'll be a nice change. Well, you won't think so. He's bigger than you are, and he's whipped every top fighter from here to San Antonio. You trying to tell me that all they're gonna do is Try and get me into a fist fight with Rance? Driscoll and Rachel ain't stupid. They know Judge Fabian would call in the soldiers and hang any man who tried to gun All you. All right, so there's much to do about nothing. Nothing, is it? Rance will beat you to a bloody pulp. You'll live a cripple the rest of your days if you don't die. Maybe. Now, what was the idea of trying to scare Miss Sally? Ah, I asked you a question. And you'll get no answer from me. If you don't know what's wrong with you marrying a girl like her, I'd never get it through your thick head. That widow make a remark, huh? Look, I got some fine brass knuckles around here. You better try them on for size. I don't need your brass knuckles or anything else. So you think I'll leave Miss Sally a widow, huh? It ain't likely. When Big Rance gets through with you, there couldn't even be a marriage. Now quit being a fool and put these in your pocket. No, thanks. Well, I've seen Big Rance fight. At least let me show you some of his dirty tricks. I'm not interested, Mr. Kelly. But in regards to Miss Sally, if I ever hear the... Get story... out of my place! I won't sleep awake tonight. I'll see Big Rance's fist breaking your jaw and cracking your ribs. He wears Mexican spurs on his boots, and I can see him now... Mr. Dra Kelly, will you kindly shut up? I found myself a brave girl. You know, you're the one that ought to be wearing skirts. Sometimes I think you're my friend, other times I think you're my enemy. You do me a favor tomorrow morning and be my friend, huh? What's the deal? Just don't try and stop the fight. Promise? Oh, and uh, I hope you'll stand up for me at my wedding. You're dreaming, Wyatt. Judge find a seat to hundred dollars. Three hundred. Count it. That's all right, Mr. Driscoll. I trust you when you're sober. Thanks. One other piece of business, Earp. A lot of our boys are waiting outside. They're not packing guns. Yeah, I noticed that through the window. My foreman, Mr. Rance, would like to have a talk with you. That is, if you'll take off your guns and keep your deputies from interrupting the conversation. Well, I tell you, Mr. Driscoll, I've already issued the necessary orders. I just hope you gentlemen have picked out a nice ringside section. We're going to enjoy every second you last.
Your name Rance? Yeah. Is that what you wanted? Yeah. some water. You can take more of a beating than this. No, Wyatt, please. You flipped him. Get Stay get back, up. Sally. Keep her back. He's had all he can take. All right. Anybody else want some? Yeah, I do. The Driscolls can't whoop you. Us Rakels can. No, Wyatt, don't fight anymore. She's right. You're tired. Look, I either run this town or I don't. <laughs> Get up! back to the hotel. You didn't have to fight that other man. It was brutal. I'm in a brutal business. I told you that. Now you know. Yes. Now I know. It's over, but you better put these on. She'll feel better about it after she thinks about it. No. No, she won't. She didn't even have to slap my face. I've quit dreaming, Mr. Kelly. Up the country, the old wild west country, he made law and order prevail. And none can deny it, the legend of Wyatt forever will live on the trail. Oh, Wyatt Earp, Wyatt Earp, brave, courageous, and bold. 